This is the city, Los Angeles, California. Like any other city, there are a great many ways to make money here, or lose it. This is one way. In the state of California, it's legal, provided you buy a ticket of admission and place your bets here. In California, over $600 million is wagered annually at racetracks, all open, above board, and within the law. Like any other legitimate business where great amounts of money are involved, there are those who cut themselves in for an illegal percentage. Sections of this volume were enacted just for them. It all begins with a 10 cent phone call to a man who keeps his business records on a plastic tabletop and who doesn't bother to enter his profit and loss in the company ledger. Or who keeps his records on a highly volatile material known as flash paper. A simple kitchen match is often his key to freedom. When this happens, it becomes part of my job. I carry a badge. It was Monday, January 9th. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of Administrative Vice Division. The boss is Captain Harry Nelson. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. Bill Gannon invited me to join him at an interdenominational breakfast sponsored by Police Post 381 of the American Legion. It was almost over. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. three guests and to say that I'm glad so many of you were able to be with us this morning and now I'll call on the chaplain of the Los Angeles Police Department for the benediction Sergeant William Riddle will you all please rise shall we pray our Heavenly Father we thank you this morning for one of life's great prizes the chance to work hard at a work worth doing we thank you for the words law, justice, freedom, and the opportunity we in this room have to protect their meaning. Lord, the psalmist has said, through God we shall do valiantly. We ask that this might be true in our day-to-day -day battle against crime. Dismiss us with thy blessing. Amen. 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 The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming. Yeah. See, I told you you'd enjoy yourself. It was fine. You ought to come to more of these, Joe. Well, I'm not a member of the Legion. Too bad, but you can come as my guest as often as you like. How often do they have this breakfast? Once a year. You know, there's one thing I didn't know. What's that? I didn't know the department had a chaplain. You didn't? No. Why? Well, I just didn't know, that's all. How long has he been with us? Six, seven years now. I'm surprised you didn't know, Joe. What else does he do on the job? Joe, he's the chaplain. He doesn't have to do anything else. What else would you expect him to do? I don't know. I just wondered, that's all. Well, it's like I've always said. What's that? Joe, you're a heathen. a.m. Bill and I returned to the office. Captain Nelson wanted to see us. How are you doing on the West Belt book? Looks like we got the back office pinned down, but we don't have probable cause for a search warrant yet. All right. Maybe North Hollywood's found some daylight for us. Yeah. What do they got, Skipper? 318 out in the valley. Domino Bar and Grill. Looks like the bartender's taking the action. Name's Richard Klinger. No previous record. Westerfeld's been seen in the joint. Seems pretty friendly with Klinger. You figure operating the location? That's right. But you'll have to sit this one out, Gannon. You worked North Hollywood too long. Pretty good chance you'll be burned. You continue on the Westerfeld surveillances. See if you can find a tie between him and that back office clerk. Yes, sir. Who's working it out in North Hollywood? Yes. Send him in. Friday, the man you'll be operating with is here now. Friday and Gannon, Sergeant Bill Riddle, North Hollywood Vice. Riddle's OIC out there. Come on in, Sergeant. Thought you gave a real nice benediction this morning, Chaplain. Thanks. One thing I want to make clear, Riddle's had his share of vice experience. When he's not in those dress blues, he's a policeman like the rest of us. He's made his share of cases the same as any other man in the department. Well, maybe there's one slight difference. What's that? The only time I drink is on the job. Nine 
9.40 a.m., Riddle, Gannon, and I met in the squad room to work out plans for operating the Domino Bar and Grill. Sure never figured it, Chaplain. How's that, Gannon? Well, I mean, it's kind of unusual, isn't it? Maybe, but it's what I want to do. Is that right? Yeah, before we moved out here, I had my own church in upstate New York. If you really think about it, there's a certain affinity between preaching the Word of God and being a policeman. They're both on the side of right. Makes sense. What kind of cover will work best for you? While I was studying theology, I worked my way through as a part-time surveyor. That's what they know me as in the bar. Well, it leaves me out. I don't know anything about surveying. You don't have to. I got enough to carry us through. You can be the chain man, you know, the guy that holds the rod and helps me measure while I look through the transit. Sounds reasonable. Khaki pants, cloth jacket. That's the idea. I'm pretty well accepted in this joint. They know me as Bill Radford. But they're still too hinky to take any of my action. What surveying outfit do we work for? I'm an independent contractor. You work with me. All right. Now, it's an off day for Santa Anita. First post for the Eastern tracks is around 10 our time. There's not much local action. What do you say we throw him a curve and start operating tonight? Fine. You know, Chaplain, no matter how you slice it... What's that? This has got to do, Joe, a world of good. Monday, January 9th, 5.30 p.m. Bill Riddle and I checked out an unmarked station wagon from the carpool, and we drove out to the San Fernando Valley. The Domino Bar and Grill was located in the 2000 block on Lancashire Boulevard. Riddle was known in the place and considered almost a regular. He pointed out the waitress, Angie. He said she was friendly. Riddle was on a first-name basis with Richard Klinger, the bartender. Hiya, Bill. Ryan Water? Fine. Angie, I'd like you to meet a buddy of mine, Joe Frazier. Angie. Boy, Angie. Huh. Haven't seen you around for a couple of days. Where you been hiding? Oh, I finally picked me up a chain man, Joe here. Huh. Good deal. What do you have, Joe? Beer's fine. Why don't we sit at the bar? Bath the breeze with Dick. Suits me. What did you say, Bill? You got me a chain man. I'm back in business. So as you tell me. Glad to hear it. One draft, one right. Keep it. Buy a mink coat. Who's he, J.P. Morgan? No, but he got his unemployment check today. Well, I'll just pick up a stole. It's too hot in California for a coat. You do that. Kind of slow, huh? It's a little early yet. We do pretty good late business. Is that so? You know, I've been thinking about getting a piano player, but it's pretty rough to get a permit this time. Oh, Dick, say hello to Joe Frazier, guy I work with. Glad to know you, Joe. Same here. So you finally got an assistant in that surveying job, huh? Yep. I'm happy to hear it. I hated to see all that smart going to waste. Yeah, a little tough to get in gear when you're from out of state. I know what you mean. L.A.'s not the easiest place to start shaking hands quick. Yeah, this is nowhere city as far as I'm concerned. Is that so? Yeah, they leave the sidewalks out all night here. They roll up the town. Where are you from? Right here, born and raised. Been the same since I can remember. Cops keep the lid nailed down, no action, no nothing. Oh, I haven't been here as long as Joe, but I gotta go along. L.A. stands for low on action. Angie single. Checks out at 2 a.m. Well, now, that's nice to know, but that's not what I had in mind. I'm talking about a little tax-free circus money. You gotta drive all the way down to Caliente or out to Santa Anita. Yeah? I like to have a little something going every day. Maybe nothing big, but a little daily recreation don't hurt anybody. You say you're a native here? That's right. Well, then you ought to know. Yeah. Well, it's against the law. Thursday, January 12th. Three days went by. We were certain Klinger was taking action, but he wasn't taking any from us. 3.30 p.m. Bill picked us up in Unit 1K80. We cruised the far side of the valley while we talked. We've been living with Westerfeld. So far, nothing. Yeah? We get him up in the morning, put him to bed at night. So far, it's the same routine. Hasn't been near that back office. And the clerk acts like a hermit. Stops at a different liquor store every night. They all sell scratch sheets, but we haven't seen him buy one. Mm -hmm. Goes to the back office, and that's it. Well, sooner or later, Westerfeld's got to shake hands with his clerk. We'll stay with it. How are you two doing? Nothing so far, but Joe has a thought. Yeah? It's a waitress in there. Name's Angie. She must know what's going on. Maybe she'll share it with us. How do you figure to work it? Well, tonight, Riddle and I will hang around till closing. Maybe I can buy our breakfast. I'll fill the skipper in. Keep in touch. All right. Have a good breakfast, Joe. Riddle and I returned to the Domino Bar and Grill. We sat in a booth until almost closing time, 1.37 a.m. Last call. I'm fine. Angie? Yes? You got any plans when you get off tonight? Why? Well, I could take you to the Coconut Grove, but they'll be closed, too. Well, then. How about some breakfast? Never before noon. 
You know, you ought to take him up on it, Angie. Joe's a nice, round-headed, single boy. Thanks anyway, Bill, but you can see Angie and I just aren't star-crossed. Whatever that means. Sure you don't want another? No, thanks. Doesn't look too promising. No, I don't know. I still got 15 minutes before closing. I'll leave you the wagon. Good luck. Right. See you tomorrow, Bill. I beg your pardon, sir. May I join your party? I'm not having any party, fella. Do you mind if I sit down? I'm a little road weary. When the rest of your gang gets back, I will move over. Okay? You're carrying quite a load, aren't you? How do you mean, sir? You've had a little too much to drink. Well, no, sir, I have not. I may have had one or two, but I know my capacity. I do not get drink. Now, may I buy you a little drunk? No, and I don't think you can have one either. Last call's over. Last call? Why don't you let me call you a cab? I have one cab, sir. Well, don't you think you ought to climb in it and head for home? Sir, I would just like to have a little toast with your party. I will buy a round of friends for all of your drinks. I told you, there's no party here and the bar is closed. With a dirty little Ernie. What's that? Ernie, that dirty little Ernie, he lied to me again. He told me the checker bar was open till all night. Well, this is the Domino Bar. The Domino Bar? Oh, the dirty little Ernie. He didn't even tell me they changed the name of this place. Here, drink this. It'll make you feel better. What is that? What do you like in your coffee? Hot. No, I mean cream, sugar. Sugar? Yeah, well, sugar turns to alcohol. It gets you all ground up inside. It's no good. But thank you for hospitality. Deedle do deedle dum. Is she the owner? Don't you think you better drink that, mister? The name is Simmons. Remember the name. J. Simmons. I am from Pismo Beach, sir. Well, you're a long way from home, aren't you? That's about 100 miles up north. Well, I have been trying to get to Los Angeles. For five months now to, to say hello to the old gang down here, sir. You drink that and I'll help you into your cab. You know, I don't drink and drive, sir. Inca Hull and gasoline do not mix. That's right. That's right. I love clam chowder. Is that so? I kept looking all over for Pismo Beach just to get a bowl of clam chowder. I found it. I have moved my home to Pismo Beach. I love clams. You Navy? Navy. All right, now. Don't you think it's about time you headed for home? Angie, would you mind locking up for me tonight? Shirley's sick. Not at all, Dick. Hope she feels better. Thanks. Come on, fellow, I'll get you a cab. I have one cab, sir. I wish to go back to Pismo Beach. Would you get me a cab which knows which way it is to Pismo and tell it I'll drive? You're not gonna do any driving. I certainly am. I'm too drunk to walk. Come on, let's go. Let you and I go out the front. We're okay, huh? Diddle dum bum bum ba dee do dee dum bum bam doom curfew time. Dolly dolly dum dee dum. End of the night, Joe. Yeah, it kind of looks that way. How about a cigarette? Got a lock up? Yeah, I know. There's no law against smoking after 2 a.m., is there? No, I guess not. Who's Shirley? Who? I heard Claire say that Shirley was sick. Oh, you'll have to excuse me, I'm tired. Shirley, that's Dick's daughter. She's 10. What's the matter with her? Something to do with her heart. I don't know exactly, a murmur, something like that. Dick's a widower, you know. Is that so? Seems like a nice guy. He is. How long you been working for him, Angie? Oh, he doesn't own the place. Somebody by the name of Burroughs up north. I was hired by them in San Francisco. Told them I wanted to come south, and they put me in here. Close to three years now. You must know Klinger pretty well. Not that well. 
But he's been a good friend. That's all I meant. Sure. What is it, Angie? You don't think much of me, do you? Never bothered to rage you. Why? All men are alike and all that? I guess. You meet all kinds hustling drinks in a bar. I imagine you do. I say you meet them all, but they're all alike. Not all. You're different? It's possible. But not probable. You rate Claire pretty high. Why shouldn't I? He's straight, he's good, and he's honest. That about covers it. You have that tone in your voice like you think he's not. Well, you'd know more about that than I would. I just met him. Dick's a good man. Takes care of his little girl. No wife to help him. He worships that child. He's good. If you say so. I say so. Good night, Joe. Tuesday, January 24th, 11.35 a.m. Riddle and I met again with Bill Gannon. You do any good, Gannon? Like the Pilgrims, we're making a little progress. What do you got? Spider Westerfeld and his back office clerk in a meet. They exchange sheets. We've gone as far as we can go. The rest is up to you. Yeah, all we need is that phone number. Tuesday, January 24th, 12.30 p.m. We hoped that somehow we could persuade Dick Klinger to give us the number of the phone spot, which would give us the probable cause to have a search warrant issued against Westerfield's bookmaking operation. It didn't look too encouraging. Uh, how's it going, Dick? Not so hot, my little girl's sick again. Is it so? What's the matter with her? She has a bad heart. A congenital defect of the mitral valve, they call it. She's gonna have to have open heart surgery one of these days. Sorry to hear it. Poor little thing. She's only 10, never complains, never says a word about it. She knows she has a bad heart? Yeah. The doctor said she'd have to be told. She has to take it real easy. No running or playing with the other kids. Operation like that must cost a lot of money. Sure does. And I don't know where it's going to come from. I've got a little saved up, but not nearly enough. I wanted to have a specialist, the best. I don't blame you. It's too bad you don't have another job you could work part-time at. A lot of guys in your line pick up a few extra bucks working days. I got a little something going on the side. Hey, right? Maybe I played too close to the vest. I don't know. What's that, Dick? Well, a few days ago, you two were talking about finding a little action. Isn't that right? Yeah. You still interested? What do you got in mind? You want to get a little something down, isn't that it? You knew that three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, I didn't know you. Who's taking the action? You're looking at him. What's the setup? I double the line. 30, 12, and 6 in the first $10. Pay up to 100 in the daily double. All right. How do we get it in? The clerk will answer, bottle and bond. You come back 100 proof. Give your identification. You're Joe one for Dick, and you're Bill five for Dick. You got it? Yeah. Here's the phone number. Wednesday, January 25th, 4.30 p.m. Riddle, Gannon, and I reported to Captain Harry Nelson. Klinger told you you'd settle up with him. Yes, sir. Once a week, Monday nights. How much action have you laid in so far? 120 in the past two days. I'm ahead 3560, but Riddle's down 50. All right, first thing in the morning, Joe, you and Riddle go over to the DA's office and start the ball rolling on the search warrants. We'll tentatively plan to go Saturday. Usual procedure. Lieutenant Swenson will brief all concerned personnel around 10.30 a.m. Radio communications coordinated through our office with standby crews ready to stiff any suspected phone spots after we serve the warrants on Westerfeld in the back office. Gannon, you serve Westerfeld. Bowser will take the phone spot. Yes, sir. Joe, you and Riddle take the back office. Yes, sir. Go time, 12.15, 15 minutes before first post. Saturday, January 28th, 11.47 a.m. We had obtained the search warrants. Riddle and I drove out to the valley. We headed for the apartment house where the back office was located. 12.15 p.m. Stay put, police officer. Search warrant for the premises. You're under arrest. Here are the numbers to the fronts and the codes. While I informed the suspect of his constitutional rights, Riddle called Captain Nelson. He told him that we were in and gave him the codes and numbers for the fronts. We asked that a black and white unit transport the suspect downtown. Saturday, January 28th, 12.48 p.m. Angie, do you mind hanging up my coat for me? Keep it. You'll need it. 
police officers. You're under arrest. Conspiracy to commit bookmaking. Oh, no. All right, Clinger, I have to inform you of your constitutional rights. Look, just a minute. I won't run out on you. I'm not going to any place, but can't you give me a couple of days? My kid's awful sick. Sorry. You have the right to remain silent. In any state it's not as if he murdered somebody. He broke the law. You, the right you sound like a cheap dime novel. Do I? Just for making a little book so he could do better for his kid. There are other ways. That little girl of his. You must feel real proud of yourself when you think about her. I wish he had. Saturday, January 28th, 4.38 p.m. Six suspects, including the head man of the bookmaking operation, Gordon Westerfeld, were booked for conspiracy to commit bookmaking. Five of them were released on bail within four hours of their arrest. A quick evaluation of records seized in the back office indicated that the bookmaking operation was handling in excess of $75,000 every week. Identification was found on Klinger bearing the name Ross Clement. A check of R&I revealed that he was wanted in Pennsylvania for forgery. He would be held in the central jail, located in PAB, pending extradition. Wednesday, February 1st, 11.15 a.m. Freeman Sugar? Yeah. You just missed it. Central jail call. Klinger wants to talk to you and Riddle. What about? Just said it was urgent. Two p.m. Bill Riddle drove in from North Hollywood. We met with Richard Clare in one of the interview rooms at the Central Jail. My little girl died an hour ago. Sorry, Clinger. I never told her what the chances were. It, it, it looked good for the first few hours after the operation. She thought she was going to get better. They, they told me she was talking about riding a horse. She loved horses. Then she just, just fell asleep and it was all over. We're sorry, Dick. I've got to make the arrangement somehow. I don't know who to turn to. I thought I'd ask you. Sure. I'd, I'd sure appreciate it. Tell us what you need. I only got $600. Hospital bills and doctors. It doesn't leave much. It doesn't have to be anything showy, you know. Just something nice. We'll take care of it. You won't need a big coffin. She's a s small girl. She, she never had much chance to grow much. She's got a, a white dress. It's, it's hanging in the closet at home. All right. She's got some favorite things in a little cardboard jewel box. Will you pick out whatever you think would look nice and make sure they fix your hair? But the big problem is, you see, we never went to church. So I, I don't have a minister or anything like that. I understand. Having a, a nice service, that's the important part. Somebody who'll say the right words. Can you find somebody that can do that? We've got somebody. The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On April 15th, trial was held in Department 183, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. Five of the suspects were found guilty under Sections 182.5 and 337A of the California State Penal Code, Conspiracy and Bookmaking. The four clerks were each fined $250 and released. Gordon R. Westerfeld was fined $500 and released. In the interest of justice, the charges against Ross Clement, also known as Richard Klinger, were dismissed. He was, however, returned to the state of Pennsylvania to stand trial for forgery.